Hello everyone, have you ever wondered if there's a way to easily design an electric drive that's cost optimized, high performance, and enabled for the industrial internet of things? If so, this video series will definitely show you how using a low cost and easy to use kit from Xilinx and Trends called the Electric Drives Demonstration Platform, or EDDP for short. But let's first start with the why. The first two modules in this series introduce you to the realm of modern electric drives design with the Xilinx Zinc 7000 All Programmable System on Chip, which we'll refer to as the Zinc SoC from here on out. The remaining modules will be hands-on, showing you the how so you can follow along at your computer. Let's start with the two main players, the electric drive and the Zinc SoC. An electric drive is an ensemble of systems connected together for the purpose of motion control. These systems are typically made up of five main functional blocks. They are the power source, power converter, motor, mechanical load, and controller. The controller incorporates both a sensing unit and a control unit. Additionally, modern electric drives use real-time Ethernet, often called industrial Ethernet, to exchange commands and status with system-level controllers, like a programmable logic controller, also known as a PLC, as well as a motion controller. PLCs, motion controllers, and the like govern the system in which the electric drive is connected to. Zinc is a family of all programmable SOCs developed by Xilinx, and its unique combination of software flexibility and hardware optimization make it the best-in-class option for electric drives, as well as other intelligent and adaptive assets. Today, we live in the era of industrial IoT, and as such, the industry demands more out of industrial assets, and electric drives are no exception. Specifically, better diagnostics, improved fault resilience, real-time optimization, coupled with the ability to operate and maintain the electric drive remotely, ideally over a secure internet connection, are just some of the big drivers. Industry 4.0 is one such industrial IoT framework in which an internet connection is assumed. Furthermore, it carries the expectation of data gathering and analysis with the intent of transforming them into actionable, real-time, and insightful information. A drive's variables, status, and operational data need to be collected and elaborated locally for intelligent diagnostic safety and optimization, or delivered through the internet for higher level optimization. Per the Industry 4.0 specification, electric drives sit in the control level. In other words, they are identified as an edge device that can be connected to the cloud directly or through another device. Edge devices typically operate on the factory floor. Often, one electric drive works cooperatively with other electric drives to automate machinery. They must acquire and deliver all their real-time operational data to monitoring, optimization, and cloud infrastructure functions. However, data produced by many electric drives is a very critical asset because it carries precious information about the machinery, its use, and its condition, among other details. Many factory owners are reluctant to expose this type of raw data over the internet. Maximizing data security is paramount for electric drives in Industry 4.0. Additionally, such data can be massive and often repetitive. If the electric drive is capable of local analytics, this will minimize its communication bandwidth and maximize its security. As we'll discuss next, aside from security and cost, most applications that use electric drives really value the fastest response times. So the more you can do locally, the faster you can adapt to changing circumstances, hence the value placed on intelligent adaptive assets by factory owners and operators. Restating the previous requirements, we essentially have a mixture of real-time control, industrial networking, edge analytics, functional safety, cybersecurity, and software governance, which call for computing power, determinism, exact timing, and modularity. Timing within subsystems in electric drives needs to be tightly coupled and typically spans several order of magnitude, from nanoseconds to hundreds of milliseconds, and require extreme synchronization. Modularity implies that change in one module, for example the PLC application, does not compete for or encroach on processor resources with things like torque control out of concern that it will change its response time. Using the language of an industrial system architect, it's a difficult problem of function partitioning, real-time determinism, real-time response, and demonstrable non-interference. Can Xilinx Zinc SOCs provide a benefit to such systems? We strongly believe it does. The Zinc 7000 and Zinc UltraScale Plus families of SOCs can simplify and meet all the aforementioned requirements offering the best task partitioning approach, enabling real-time determinism and response time with clear and demonstrable non-interference. I'll cover how EDDP addresses all of these requirements shortly, but first let's continue to dive into current trends for electric drives. Electric drive manufacturers typically offer three classes of products, the premium or high-end for maximum performance and capabilities, the standard or mid-range for balanced price performance requirements, the compact or streamlined product for applications that are able to trade capabilities for lowest cost. 
Historically, such products have been designed with each individual system in mind, the premium, the standard, or the compact separately. This often resulted in completely different designs. For example, just by selecting different processors would result in duplicated and wasted design efforts tied to porting and tuning applications on the different target products. Furthermore, you'd also have different suppliers and procurement paths, different tools and compilers, and many other diversities that aren't adding value, just the opposite actually. The net result of these duplications extend beyond hampered reuse and actually leads all the way to wasted business benefits, like reduced earnings. A better approach is a platform concept where all the main product properties are shared amongst the three classes. Zinc 7000 and Zinc UltraScale Plus offer the solution to creating a proper scalable platform. Let's see how. One of the main platforming attributes of Zinc 7000 is based on the consistency of the Cortex A9 processor cluster and its peripheral set, which in a whole is called the processor system or PS. The peripherals represented in gray in the picture are always present and it is the standard I.O. of the PS. The application processors span from a single core cost optimized Cortex A9 to dual cores. Rest assured the A9s have the same architecture and capability for single and dual core variants. Also in the PS are powerful DDR controllers, 512K bytes of L2 cache, 256K bytes of on chip memory, and the Neon floating point unit processor, one for each Cortex A9. The PS represents the fixed computing platform element of a Zinc SoC. In contrast to the fixed component, which is of course software programmable of the Zinc SoC, you also have the variable part of the platform that is designated in yellow, which is the programmable logic or the PL. Here you have the programmable IO and the programmable resources like multiply and accumulate blocks, true dual port memories that can be used as storage for control, acquisition, and networking. These features of the PL scale from very few to hundreds or even thousands in some cases. In the PL, you can drop in a Xilinx MicroBlaze processor that allows you to instantiate dual-core lockstep for safety applications or as a coprocessor to the Cortex-A9 in the PS. This is the variable computing platform that allows you the benefit of adaptation to the different target requirements, putting more or less functional ingredients into your product. Here is the key point of differentiation and value where you can offload tasks and hardware, accelerate operations and algorithms, and even instantiate new processing capabilities with MicroBlaze that set aside a Xilinx SoC from other SoCs available on the market. Building on what we just discussed, the platform scalability picture could look like this. Start with a single core Zinc 7000 SoC for the compact product. Move to the dual core for the standard product. Transition into, and mind you, this is all both footprint and architecturally compatible, a larger programmable device, or perhaps a higher processor frequency for the premium models. All of this is done within the wide confines of the Zinc 7000 family of SoCs. Then you can continue scaling in the Zinc UltraScale Plus, which offers a dual core A53 64-bit processor. This is the same processor used in a Raspberry Pi, dual R5 real-time processors, and even larger programmable logic that can accommodate in the smallest device all the needs for a very com complete and complex drive uh, and PLC on the same product. Beyond that, probably appealing for more complex applications or multi-drive units with human machine interfaces, there is the quad-core A53 with a graphics processing unit. On the left side, there is the pure FPGA or PL-only devices which don't have any built-in ARM processing units. These are completely capable of being used as companion chips where the effort of porting legacy code outweighs the benefits of a new ARM-based embedded platform. In such cases, either Spartan 7 or Arctic 7 can be used for the external processor offload, specifically for the industrial networking interfaces, as well as for time-critical portions that Xilinx devices are excellent at. Before delving into the details of EDDP, let's think about the challenges as an electric drives designer. Maybe you are already familiar with drives using several devices, for example a DSP, which is a digital signal processor for control, combined with a microprocessor for higher functions, like networking, but you're looking for more integration. Maybe you might be new to FPGA, but you'd like to learn how to design with this technology and its productivity tools. Perhaps you might want to migrate from a slow DSP and processor into a much faster application processor like the Cortex-A9 from ARM, but you're wondering if it will run as you expect. Or you might be sick and tired of having to fine-tune your interrupt service routine, chasing after the endless goal of keeping your control algorithm deterministic without depending on the CPU workload. It could be you would also like to run control and hardware with FPGA and you would like to use your C, C++ skill set instead of hardware programming languages traditionally used for FPGA design. 
perchance you might have legacy code and you would want to port your design onto a much modern platform, but you do not have the hardware. Imaginably, you might need to be familiar with Delta Sigma current and voltage measurements, but you do not know where to start. Possibly, you would like to have Linux, but at the same time, your electric drive needs to behave deterministically with low response time. Lastly, conceivably, you would like to use the drive also for acquiring current angles voltages directly from the hardware at high speed for integration into Industry 4.0 or other industrial IoT cyber-physical systems. Well, if at least one of the challenges presented is something you face, then you'll definitely want to watch the next module on how Xilinx can address these challenges for you in an elegant and efficient manner using the Zinc SOCs as demonstrated with EDDP.